Perfect. All right. Um, without further ado, I just want to go ahead and introduce our speaker tonight. Uh, very happy to welcome Terry Lemire with us. Terry is an occupational therapist who has been practicing for 24 years here in the Frederick area. Uh, she has been a provider of environmental assessments with Maryland's Medicaid waiver program for the last 19 years. And Terry became a certified aging in place specialist in 2020. Terry certainly comes with plenty of experience uh, to share with us tonight. Um, Terry strongly believes that when possible, providing occupational therapy in a client's home is the ideal place to help that person flourish and function as independently and safely as possible. Terry's goal with her business, Healthy Home Living Solutions, is to provide a service to her clients that will facilitate the safest environment, their home, in order to continue living independently and successfully. Uh, Terry lives in Middletown with her husband and two college-age sons and a beautiful Chesapeake Bay Retriever. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna welcome Terry to the screen. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, good Perfect. evening, everybody. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with my little uh, slideshow here. Let me see if I can get it on full screen. Hold on just a minute. Okay, there we go. Um, let me know if you can, if uh, you're not able to see this. Uh, looks but looks let's great, go. Terry. Okay, great. Um, so tonight I'd like to talk to you about navigating safety in and around the home uh, as caregivers um, you know, the, your loved ones that you're caring for. I want you to kind of imagine the home that you're caring for your loved one in uh, while we talk about this, uh, this topic. Uh, just like Christina said, I've been an occupational therapist here in the Frederick area for the last 24 years. Uh, and I've really focused on working with the older adult uh, in their home setting. So that's been my forte. Um, I love working with my clients in their homes because obviously that's where um, people function the most and uh, home is where the heart is and everybody wants to be able to uh, function well in their own home and safely. Uh, like Christina said, um, I have a lot of experience doing home safety assessments. I've done them for about 20 years. Um, with the Medicaid waiver program. Uh, and so recently I started my own business, Healthy Home Living Solutions, uh, to be able to offer this service to people who may not qualify for the Medicaid waiver program. And this, this is a little bit different where we're kind of, I'm focusing more on people who want to be proactive and um, be able to age in place and prevent falls so that they can live in their homes as long as they can. So, okay, so tonight I'd like to talk about a few things. One, uh, National Family Caregivers Month. Uh, why is home safety a priority? Why is your loved one's optimal independence important? Take care of you so you can be there for them and for yourself. And tips and tricks to increase safety and independence with um, your your people that you're taking care of. Um, so first of all, I don't know if you knew this, but this month is actually National Family Caregivers Month. And to me and to a lot of people who work in the aging industry, the caregivers are so important and so crucial in the role of caring for our older adults. Um, obviously, if you're a caregiver, you know how tough of a job it is especially the caregivers who are caring for their loved ones day in and day out, uh, getting, you know, doing the, the nitty gritty, you know, toileting and bathing and, you know, managing uh, maybe behaviors with someone who has dementia. Um, but caregiving can also apply to people who just caregive from afar, who supervise the care for their loved ones where they are uh, managing their medicines, they are managing their finances, 
it, it runs the gamut on what a caregiver is and all of it is extremely important. Um, okay, so, okay. So uh, I think that this month is the perfect month for you as the caregiver to really focus on how well you're able to give care and what changes you might be able to make to make it easier for yourself and to make it more efficient for your loved one. So I'm glad that I'm here this month to talk about it. Um, so first of all, why is home safety priority? Uh, here's some statistics. Some of them are a little downers, but you know, it's, it's good to kind of know the reality. One out of every three seniors falls each year. The majority, 55% of all fall injuries among older people occurs inside the home. So that's why home safety is, you know, we really want to concentrate on stuff that we can control. Uh, falls account for 25% of all hospital admissions and 40% of all nursing home admissions. And this is kind of a, a depressing one. 40% of those admitted will never return to independent living and 25% will die within one year. And we, we don't want that. If, if we can prevent it, you know, we, we want to prevent it as much as possible, obviously. Um, and one that I added at the end here is when you're caring for a healthy loved one or as healthy as they can be, who isn't in pain, it's much easier and safer for everyone involved. Um, so that's another benefit of uh, making sure that home safety is made a, a priority. One thing that I did want to talk about is that falling is not considered to be a normal occurrence with aging. Um, There's so many things that we can do to prevent falls or at least to try to prevent falls. Obviously, some falls just kind of happen, but uh, there are some things that we can be proactive with, with um, doing some home safety strategies. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about cost comparisons too. Um, and this, this is very, you know, can really encourage you to try to create as, as safe as a home environment as possible for your loved one. Um, it, it's more convenient, obviously, for your loved one to stay home and it's more comfortable but it's also less expensive. Um, in this area, nursing home stays can be around 10,000 a month. Uh, assisted living stays can be about 5,000 a month. Um, and you know, if, if your loved one is staying home, that can cost some money too. You, you, um, you know, might pay for some in-home caregiving. Uh, you may pay for transportation, things like that, but it's, it's all in, what's important to you, and uh, also what is the best situation for your loved one. Sometimes the best situation is for them to be in a higher level of care in an assisted living or in a nursing home. Um, but if, you know, if, if the goal is to keep your loved one home, then you really wanna try to do your due diligence to make that happen. Um, okay, so why is your loved one's optimal independence important? A lot of times as caregivers, we want to do everything for our loved ones. It's easier, it's faster, you're in control. Uh, you don't have to worry about being patient with your loved one. Unfortunately, that's not doing either of you any good because the benefits of assuring that your loved one is as independent as possible are many. One is that he or she will be happier. They're able to do more for themselves. We all know that caring for someone who's happier is easier than caring for someone who's not as happy. Um, another thing is if you're encouraging your loved one to do as much for themselves as possible, um, they're going to be more active. So they're going to be able to build on their balance, on their strength, on their range of motion, on their endurance. Um, so that's another real good benefit for encouraging independence. Another thing is he or she will have a greater sense of purpose. All of us know that if you don't have a sense of purpose, you're just not happy. You're not fulfilled. 
um, you become restless, you become sad. Um, and this is what happens with a lot of our older adults. Uh, they get older, they feel like they don't really play a role in their loved one's lives as much. So if, if you can, you, you really wanna engage them in, in as many purposeful activities as possible. Independence and activity boosts memory skills. So if they're using their minds, uh, even if it's just you know, folding clothes, um, you know, sitting at the table, uh, sorting stuff for dinner, things like that, uh, that uses their mind. It's exercising their mind and it's helping with their memory skills ultimately. Uh, and then for you, think about for you, if, if you're able to encourage your loved one to be as independent as possible, it's gonna be less physical and emotional toll on you, which is really, really important. I wanted to tell you a quick story about that. Um, when I first became an occupational therapist, I worked at uh, what's now Frederick Health and Rehabilitation Center. Um, and I had a patient who I would go into her room and work with her in the mornings on her uh, morning routine. So getting dressed, uh, getting up on the edge of the bed, standing from the bed and transferring to her wheelchair. And I assumed, which we all know when you assume, um, I assumed that she just needed a lot of assistance. I just assumed that. So I went ahead and I took it upon myself to provide her with maximal assistance um, to go from sit to stand and from the bed to transfer her to the wheelchair. And it was a lot. Uh, one day I was sitting in the rehab gym and the physical therapist was working with the same patient and the physical therapist put a walker in front of her and said, okay, go ahead and get up, miss so-and-so. And the woman got up with supervision. That was something that I will never forget. And so keep in mind that if you provide more assistance than your loved one needs, you're only putting more on yourself and you're doing them a disservice because uh, you know, they're not moving as much and using the brain as much. So that's really important. Take care of you so you can be there for them. This is probably something that you already know, but tonight's a really good reminder for this. Um, the first thing is hold a family meeting. Um, I know when me and my sister were caregivers for our mom, um, we were twins. And so we were able to choose the financial twin. I'm sorry. I was, yeah, she was the financial twin. I was the medical twin. And, um, it was great because that way I knew that any time a medical situation came up, I, I stepped up any time a financial situation came up, she stepped up. And it just made it more clear cut. We knew what to expect. Um, and it's, it's, it's a full-time job to take care of someone else. So that's really important. So hold a family meeting, talk with any siblings that are available, family members. You wanna assign uh, clear responsibilities and ask expectations so that everyone is on the same page. It's so important. Uh, and if you can include your older adult, loved one in the meetings, because that way they know what to expect too. Sometimes they'll keep you on, on task. Um, even if someone can't contribute directly with hands-on care, they can help you in other ways. Uh, some people, you know, if they have a little extra money, uh, one of your siblings might want to pay for some uh, paid caregiver help so that you can have a break. Um, someone can take over managing finances or dealing with health insurance claims. Um, it's all so helpful. Find a support system, get help from friends, neighbors, or your faith community, or find local caregiver support groups. It really is worth the effort. Right now, you know, if you're in the thick of it, it might be like, how in the heck am I gonna take the time to do that? Um, but really try to find the time to do that because in the long run, it's gonna, help you, it's gonna help them, and you know everybody involved will be happier. 
make healthy living a priority. And this, this is a tough one because when you are buried under so many things to do, um, it's really, really hard to eat well, get enough sleep, exercise regularly. Um, but try to figure it out because uh, I, in my experience as an OT, I've seen so many caregivers, you know, daughters, sons, um, they've just worked themselves into the ground. They end up getting sick and um, it's just not a good situation. So do everything you can to make it better for yourself, which ultimately will make it better for your loved one. Schedule regular breaks. Taking breaks gives you a way to recharge both emotionally and mentally. Um, again, you know, try to enlist your support system so that you can take those breaks. It's so, so important. Uh, and look for available resources. Um, our local uh, area agency on aging has educational materials, connections to local caregiving resources. There are lots of support groups out there. Um, it's, it's just really important. Um, there is one, a Facebook group, which, which I will put on, I've put on the slide for the end of this presentation that uh, me and a colleague have started. It's called Aging in Place in Frederick County, Resources and Support. This is an excellent Facebook group um, where you can go in, you can ask questions. There are professionals in the aging industry in that group. Uh, that can kind of point you in the right direction, uh, feel free to vent, um, share resources, things like that. It's, it's a great group and it's really, really evolving. So now I want to go into the tips and tricks to increase safety and independence in your loved one. And now we're gonna really focus on the home safety aspect of the presentation. So what I want you to do is I want you to imagine the home setup where you take care of your loved one. And I want you to imagine the entrances that you use or that your loved one uses, the stairs inside the home, if there are any, the kitchen, the bathrooms, and the bedroom. And we will go one at a time. Okay, so with the entrances, think about each entrance of the home. And I want you to think also, um, kind of keep an open mind because a lot of times we will do what we've always done because we've always done it. And I want you to think about just being open-minded of you know, maybe making changes so that it's safer and easier. So entrances, you wanna think about the front door, any back doors, the garage entrance. Is there proper lighting there? That's really important. You know, if you're giving physical assistance to your loved one, then, you know, your loved one doesn't have to de depend on the lighting quite so much. But again, you want to facilitate as much independence as you can. The proper lighting is important. Are there stairs? Is it difficult for your loved one to use the stairs? Where there's a will, there's a way. There's always things we can do. Of course, some of it does cost money, um, but I want you to think of it as an investment. And there are also a lot of resources in the Frederick County area. Um, so, you know, hopefully we can get it done for what you need. Um, so if there are stairs, think about that. Um, put, install railings, preferably a railing on each side. If you need a ramp, for somebody who uh, is in a wheelchair. There's also something called a vertical platform lift where, uh, and people have installed them at their outside exits where the stairs are, where you can just roll your loved one onto the platform, push a button and it'll go down to the ground level. A simple grab bar is, is also really helpful at the door if that's all your loved one needs, just to give them that extra oomph to get up the steps. And even an uncluttered walkway to the car is really, really important. Um, I know that you know a lot of a lot of my clients I go and and they're they have clutter everywhere, but they don't notice it because it's been there. Um, that's really you know fall prevention 101. 
is uh, really, really try to just clear that walkway. I don't really care if you just push it to the side, um, preferably, you know, get rid of stuff you don't need and organize. But as long as that walkway is clear, that's really important. My aunt, as a matter of fact, just replaced her stepping stone walkway with a concrete sidewalk. And she's so happy because she can now walk so much easier and safer. And she knows that she's done her due diligence to try to prevent falls as much as possible. And it makes me happy too. Um, as the caregiver, you wanna provide physical assistance and or supervision whenever necessary. Um, sometimes grab um, gate belts are helpful to just have that hand on, on your loved one. Uh, but that's something that, you know, is um, different for each person. Uh, and then if your loved one enjoys being able to open the door themselves, enjoys being able to work the lock themselves, um, you want to make sure that that door handle and lock is easily accessible. So doorknobs sometimes are difficult uh, with people with arthritis. And so uh, the le lever type door handle is easier. Um, if you take care of somebody with dementia, um, obviously you don't want that uh, door to be easily accessible if uh, they are apt to use it unsupervised. Uh, there are things that you can do for that as well. Um, some uh, people with dementia are receptive to stop signs that you can put on the door. Um, there's also such a thing as a door alarm. So when the door opens, it alarms and it, it alerts you that the door is opening. Um, so there, there again, there, where there's a will, there's a way. Okay, so let's talk about the inside stairs. Some people have stairs that lead up to a second level. Some people have stairs that lead down to a basement. Um, again, you want to have railings, preferably one on each side. Check those railings, make sure they're not loose. Um, probably half the homes I go in, the, the railing is loose. And that's another thing, you, you kind of like, it's been like that for so long, you don't think about it. Uh, and that's, that's a pretty easy fix to tighten the railing. Proper lighting is crucial, um, especially if you have a loved one who you just need to provide supervision for and they're using the stairs by themselves. Um, Non-slip flooring is another crucial thing. Uh, a lot of our older adults live in older homes. The rug has been there for years. It gets slippery, um, you know, so that, that's something that you want to invest in is either uh, non-slip flooring, like hardwood uh, that's non-slip, or a new carpet. Yeah, it's, it's an investment, but it could prevent falls, which is so important. There's also something called a stair glide. And um, that is, um, some of you may be familiar with that. It's like a chair that you get installed to the, the stairs, push a button, and it goes right up the stairs and right down the stairs. Um, that's really, really helpful for someone who has difficulty going up and down the stairs, but they still want to go up and down the stairs. Um, if at all possible, if you have someone who has a lot of difficulty going up and down stairs, if it's possible, create a bedroom for them in a room on the ground level, that's ideal. Um, and or physical assistance, uh, you may need to provide that to your loved one. Ultimately, don't use the stairs if it's unsafe to do it. Um, and, you know, again, with our loved ones with dementia who can't remember to not use the stairs, uh, there's some things you can do. Again, you can use uh, like a stop sign type thing. Uh, sometimes that's not sufficient. So you may need to put uh, like a baby gate up, um, things like that. So that would be also an individual type trial and error type thing. Okay, so now um, let's talk about the kitchen. I wanted to talk about the kitchen a little bit first. Um, the kitchen is where a lot of our older adults, especially the women, uh, have such fond memories. 
of cooking for their family. Um, it's, it really is like a family type room. You know, people love to be in the kitchen. If it's at all possible, include your loved one in the meal preparation, even if they're sitting at a table, uh, sorting things for dinner, um, you know, setting the table, anything that they can help with it, it'll give them a feeling of being needed, which is really important. Um, again, proper lighting. That's so important in every aspect of the house. Non-slip flooring and secure rugs. Um, many, many people love their area rugs, love their throw rugs. Um, I'm one of the OTs that doesn't make someone remove all of their throw rugs. Um, if the throw rug is, is serving a function, such as a throw rug right outside of the shower, then I'm completely fine with that, as long as it's not a slippery throw rug. Um, and you can also apply uh, non-skid strips underneath the throw rug, or just get one that has one of those rubberized mats. Th those are the best ones. Some people use those rugs in the kitchen. So as long as it's not like a, a thick pile one where it's easy to trip over and it's not slippery, I'm okay with those. Uh, you wanna keep the kitchen as uncluttered as possible, as organized as possible. And you want the daily use items within easy reach as much as possible. Um, I, I have a few clients who have used step stools to get to higher um, cabinets. And I, I don't like that at all. Um, I think that that is a hazard. And uh, if there's any way that you can just organize it so that the items that they use daily are within easy reach, that's the safest thing to do. Um, you can also get a reacher, but the, those reachers are good for like a lightweight box of cereal or something like that. I personally don't really like an older adult trying to reach a can, a heavy can with a reacher. Um, I just don't think that's the safest thing. The other thing is um, stoves with controls in the front of the stove. A lot of the older stoves have the controls in the back. And when you think about it, um, when you go to turn off the stove, you're reaching over a hot burner. Um, so ideally, having a stove with the controls on the front is better, safer. Um, and then if you have um, a loved one who maybe forgets to not use the stove, what they've been asked to not use the stove because they forget to turn it off, um, a lot of these stoves with the controls on the front, you can pull the knobs right off, put them somewhere else, and then you can put them right back on when you're able to provide more supervision for your loved one. Okay. Um, okay, the next one is bathrooms. Probably most of you know that up to 80% of falls that happen in the home occur in the bathroom because Obviously, there's a lot of water in the bathroom and slippery surfaces. Um, so this is going to apply to both half bathrooms and full bathrooms. First of all, did you know that you can get a toilet a little bit higher than the standard height toilet? Um, the, these are called comfort height toilets. And um, I don't know if you've experienced this, but a lot of times when you're sitting on a lower surface, it's just harder to get up from. Uh, so a lot of the older homes have uh, the lower toilets. If your loved one has, a, has difficulty getting up off the toilet, consider replacing it with a comfort height toilet. There are other options. Obviously there's the elevated toilet seat, toilet rails and grab bars next to the toilet. So there, there are a lot of options with modifying the home for safety. Um, it just all depends on what you'd like to spend, um, how you want it to look, and what's the most um, effective option for you. Grab bars where necessary in the bathrooms. Um, that's the best place to put grab bars. And nowadays, grab bars, they come in different colors. Um, they, they're actually pretty. And 
you know, who, who really cares what it looks like, uh, especially if it's just your loved one using the bathroom. Um, grab bars in the shower, of course, uh, next to the toilet. There's even grab bars that some people put on each side of a medicine cabinet for the gentlemen who still like to stand at the sink and shave. They can use one hand to hold onto the handle and the other hand to shave. So it's, it's great where, again, where there's a will, there's a way. Um, proper seating. So if your loved one takes a shower in a tub shower combo, um, a, a shower chair is great for someone who may have some balance issues, some endurance issues, um, just you know, not able to stand as easily. Um, easy, safe access for bathing. So a lot of my clients have tub showers and some of them are now replacing them with either a walk-in shower or a roll-in shower. Um, that's so much safer. Of course, a lot of my people like to still take baths. And um, once you get to a certain age, no one's gonna tell you <laughs> to do something that you don't wanna do or that to not do something that you wanna do. And so, um, Sometimes you just have to say, let's make it as safe as we can. Um, and so with if, for people who like to take baths, I recommend that they always have assistance getting in and out. And uh, we will talk about grab bars, tub rails, things like that. And of course, safe flooring in a bathroom. Uh, nowadays, they have tile that looks like hardwood that has texture on it. It's water resistant. Um, it's beautiful and it's safe. So um, I love that. Okay. And then in the bedroom, um, you want to especially consider nighttime bathroom visits. Most of us have to get up to go to the bathroom at least once in the night. Um, your aging loved one, you know, may not be safe going to the bathroom uh, by themselves at night. So it just depends on how independent they are. But uh, one thing that you wanna consider is decluttering, make sure the walkways from the bed to the bathroom are safe and uncluttered. Uh, I personally have a dog that has about 30 toys on the floor. Um, so that's a challenge in this house. Uh, motion activated nightlights. These are awesome. They are relatively inexpensive. You can buy them on Amazon. Um, they're great. You get up and they automatically turn on and light uh, the pathway. Um, also, just having a, a lamp beside the bed so they can turn that on, go to the bathroom, come back. If they're unsafe to go to the bathroom, a bedside commode is great. Um, all they have to do is stand, turn, go to the bathroom and get back in bed. Um, it all depends on your loved one and what their abilities are. Uh, for the men, a urinal next to the bed is also great because then you don't have to worry so much about uh, the gentleman getting up and possibly falling on, on the way to the bathroom. Safe flooring, again, is, is really important. Uh, and so if there's any area rugs that really don't have a purpose, I do recommend strongly to just get rid of it because all it is is a tripping hazard um, or a slipping hazard. And then since we're talking about the bedroom, something that um, occupational therapists use with their patients a lot is adaptive equipment to increase um, our client's independence. Uh, with dressing, there's such a thing as uh, reachers, long handled shoehorns, um, sock aids, things like that. And again, you wanna do anything you can to help your loved one be as independent as possible. Uh, for our loved ones who have dementia, um, a lot of times we recommend uh, having a baby monitor um, so that you can really kind of be alerted uh, if your loved one gets up in the middle of the night and is unsafe. Uh, there are uh, bed alarms uh, so that you know when they're getting out of bed, things like that. Okay, so the moral of the story of this presentation, before we go to questions, um, the moral of the story is be proactive versus being reactive. 
Um, you really wanna try your hardest to put all of these things in place so that you're not in an emergency situation and have to put them in place at the last minute because your loved one had to go to the ER. Of course, you know, that's in a uh, perfect scenario, but, but try your hardest to be proactive. Um, like I've said about three times, where there's a will, there's a way. There's almost always a solution to home safety issues and challenges. Um, the way I see putting home modifications into place, I compare that to doing estate planning or buying insurance. Um, it's something that none of us really wanna do and really wanna put the money out for, but it's gonna give you peace of mind that you've done your due diligence to do everything you can to prevent falls and um, make it a safe environment. Asking for help is okay. I want you to know that. Um, unfortunately, there is a statistic that I just read this morning NIH reports that caregivers have a 63% higher mortality rate than non-caregivers due to stress. Don't do that to yourself. If, if there is help that you can access, go ahead and access it. Um, your loved one would want you to, that, that they want you to be healthy and happy and uh, life is too short to not be. Um, so asking for help is okay. If, if you can afford it, get a cleaning service, get an, or, get an organizing service, get someone to do your yard. If you can't afford it, ask about resources to help you. Excuse me. And then also, like I said earlier, remember the Facebook group. Um, any question you have, you can post in there. I'm not going to guarantee that there's going to be an answer, but I can almost guarantee that someone can point you in the right direction for a potential answer. So I think I'm about done. Um, I'm open to questions and conversation. Terry, thank you so much. Great information. So folks, again, you can use the, the Q&A button on the bottom of your screen to type any questions that you might have for Terry. Uh, maybe a unique situation you have in your house or an area of the home that you are worried about or wondering about, Terry might have some, some good information for you. Um, Terry, something that I was thinking about when you were talking about, um, you know, the kind of thinking ahead and putting money into estate planning and all those things, we don't want to do that. I've yes. heard, certainly heard people talking about, um, you know, not wanting to mar the surfaces of their beautiful home or or okay. change things the way mom always had it. But do you, can you just speak again and reiterate the importance of, of, of doing what needs to be done to keep mom safe is better than mom not being able to be in her home at all? Yeah, I think it's so important. And I think it's, it's also a really helpful to just have a conversation with your loved one, uh, see what their goals are, if, um, if their goals are absolutely, I want it to look good, I don't want it to, to look like I'm old, um, you know, really have that heart to heart conversation about, okay, but, you know, if we don't put a grab bar here, there's a possibility that you could have a fall. And these are the statistics. And, um, but then the other option is there are so many options right now for grab bars and to making it look pretty. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there's one grab bar company that will customize the grab bars with uh, designs on them. So um, I guess one of our older gentlemen uh, really liked Tito's vodka. And so his grab bars were customized with the Tito's vodka uh, logos. And he loved it, it he just, you know, he, it, he looked forward to using that every morning in the shower. So talk um, about a, the perfect Christmas gift for someone who has yeah, everything. That's, that's right. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So um, there, there are so many different ways that, um, especially in today's day and age, that you can uh, kind of double things as, you know, for example, a towel bar, you can make that a grab bar too. And so it's your towels are on it anyway, 
you know, install a grab bar that you can hang your towels on and then you can double it as a grab bar. A lot Terry, of so. I'm sorry. Um, and so Terry, is your regular towel bar a safe grab bar? Mine? Any, no, is it in, in an average oh. person's home, oh. is the towel bar safe? Not at all. <laughs> and, and many of them in my clients' homes are loose because they do rely on that. And it's scary because it's, it is so not safe. Um, and it's such an easy, pretty, you know, inexpensive thing to do is to replace the towel bar with a grab bar. So. Terry, we've got a question. How do I request somebody to come into my house to make safety suggestions? Does my doctor need to order the service? Does insurance cover it? Okay, so it depends on the person that we're getting the safety assessment for. If you have someone who had to go to a hospital because they broke a hip or they had a stroke, um, if you wanted to get the home set up safely before they get home, then you could call me. Uh, I am not, I don't work with insurance. Uh, so it would be a private pay type situation. Um, but if you have someone in the hospital, they're ready to go home, the doctor orders a home safety assessment. Um, the assessment is done once the, the patient gets home. Medicare will cover that safety assessment. Um, and that would be done by probably an occupational therapist or a physical therapist. So, but if you're doing, if you're looking for a safety assessment with, with um, uh, solutions, you know, to make your home safer, and it's not because your loved one had a change in function, then that would be more uh, in my wheelhouse where you would call me and, um, and we would talk you know, about the services and things like that. And Terry, is there a, you talked about doing it before somebody comes home, um, doing it before somebody really starts failing and falling, doing it proactively seems to me like the smartest thing to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, just, just like I was saying before, like a lot of us, you know, we don't want to put the money out for long-term care insurance or um, estate planning and things like that. But um, you have to kind of consider it as an investment and the peace of mind is priceless, you know, to, um, to know that the house is set up as safely as possible to prevent, prevent falls. Excellent. Folks, I wonder if anybody has any other questions for Terry about how to keep your loved one or yourself safe at home. As a matter of fact, in my own home, we um, built our home two years ago uh, and I have uh, arthritic knees. And so in our stairwell going upstairs and downstairs, I made sure that we installed handrails on both sides um, cause why not, you know, it's, it makes it so much easier. And also, you know, visitors who come in my home, we're, we're hosting Thanksgiving and, um, you know, we have some older family members coming over. It's, it just feels really good to be able to say it's successful. You guys come on in. I've got this set up for you, you know? So it's, it's a nice thing. Excellent. Um, I am not seeing any other questions. Come in, Terry, do you mind taking your screen down, folks? Hopefully you have copied down Terry's information or taken a quick picture of that. I'll send it out as well. Um, okay. Terry had a, a, some information she wanted to share with you. So I will send that out to you after uh, we close up shop tonight. Um, just a couple of quick bits of information. I will also share Frederick County, the Advocates for Aging. Uh, has a wonderful grant program that provides grab bars in your home, um, uh, assessed by an occupational therapist and professionally installed. I am sorry, but I am not putting my hands on that flyer right now, but I will share that information with you. Um, our next webinar is December. December 9th will be the second Thursday in December. And I'm really excited. Actually, I'm gonna take the floor uh, in December and talk about navigating the holidays. 
Um, you'll have a, a dry run with Thanksgiving, and so maybe we can help make Christmas a little, a little, a little more jolly for you. So I hope that you will tune in and join us. I will share the link to register. It's the same one that you've been using all along. So uh, we will have that available for you. Uh, Terry, I want to say thank you for your time and your great expertise. I'm uh, even thinking about some spots in my house. Like you said, I think it's never too early. It's not just the senior you're thinking about, but yourself yeah. as well. If you fall down the flight of stairs while you're helping your mom or dad or while you're carrying up the laundry, um, who's going to take care of them? So really important that you take care of yourself uh, as well. So uh, with that, I bid you all a good evening. Enjoy uh, uh, the dark, very dark evening and uh, look forward to seeing you all in December. Thanks, everybody. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you for having me. Mm-hmm.